All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kim McDaniel, and I'm your trainer today for World Cat Discovery, A World of Possibilities. I'm a reference librarian here at KDLA, and I'm joined by Debbie Hibbard, who is also a reference librarian at KDLA. She'll be chatting for us today, so if you all have any questions or experience any problems, um, just chat that in to her. If anyone is having problems hearing, please let me know. Okay, so let's go on and get started. And um, we've got some objectives for today's training. We're going to be talking about what World Cat Discovery is and why you would want to use it. Then we will take a look at how to access it and how to search for items in World Cat. We will also take a look at how to get the information materials that you are interested in. And lastly, we will take a look at how to create an account in World Cat Discovery that allows you to manage or to keep track of items. So what is World Cat Discovery? First and foremost for us is that it is a database that's going to show you the types of things that we have available here in our collection at the State Library or the Kentucky Department for Libraries and Archives. So it's a database about our collection, but it has information about library collections worldwide. So it's much broader than the relatively small collection we have here. It has over 300 million descriptive items on books, ebooks, sound recordings, large print books, all kinds of materials that you would expect to find in a library, and not just at a state library, but other libraries as well. It also functions as a central index to articles that are in various databases. So um, if you're a user of our research databases, which are things like ProQuest and EBSCOhost, then you are aware of how to search databases for articles. And this is a place where those things are brought together and you can do a single search. And there are over 600 million articles indexed in WorldCat Discovery. So it's a very large database and some of the articles are available full text electronically. So there's a lot that you can do in WorldCat. It also provides you with direct access. You can request things directly from WorldCat. You can download articles directly from it, and you will be able to initiate ILL or interlibrary loan, which is where um, if we don't have an item here um, in our library or online, um, we can request that from another library for you and send it to you. So WorldCat is basically a very large database about information and collections that are in libraries worldwide. So why would you want to use WorldCat Discovery? Well, there are many ways that WorldCat may be very useful to you as state employees. The ability to search what we have available at the state library and beyond in a single search is very convenient and it allows you to be able to search a wide variety of information at one time. You have access to expanded types of information, meaning it not only shows you what books and audiobooks we have here at the state library, it also includes articles, ebooks, and DVDs. It also makes it easy to obtain the information that you want once you find what you're looking for, such as downloadable articles. And like I said, if there is an article that you come across that isn't available to you, you can request it through interlibrary loan while you are in WorldCat Discovery. Okay, so let's take a look at how to access WorldCat. And there are four different ways that you can access WorldCat, and I'm going to show you how to do each of them. So they're through the State Library Catalog link, the Services to State Employees page, the Research Databases page, and the State Employees menu. So let's take a look at each one of these. So this is the home page of the KDL web, KDLA website, kdla.ky.gov. And here is the link to our catalog, which is one way to get to WorldCat Discovery. Another way that you can find it is if you go up here to the State Employees tab, the drop-down menu, 
The first link is the Kentucky State Government Employees page, and that lists all the different services that we provide to state employees, and there's a WorldCat search box on that page. Also, if you go to our Research Databases page, there is a link for you to access WorldCat there. And of course, this last one is the KDLA WorldCat Discovery, which is a link directly to the database. So now what you're going to find when you click on one of those links is either this page or another page that I'll show you in just a moment, depending on what link you chose to use to get into WorldCat. Now this page is on our website and it gives you a lot of information about WorldCat Discovery. You can see down there at the bottom there are several different links to short little videos that provide you with instructions um, on how to do different things in WorldCat like place holds, reset your password, or request interlibrary loans. But the main thing that you will get on this page is here in the search box. So now if I use another one of those links, such as the one um, under the State Employees menu for the, the WorldCat Discovery Direct link, this is the page that you will get. And of course you have the search box here. And it is the same search if you use either page. It's just a different interface, but you'll get the same results whichever page you use. So let's talk about searching. and. I'm going to start with a basic search, and I want you to know that the default in WorldCat Discovery is a keyword search. And when you do a keyword search, it's a very broad search, and it doesn't just search things like the title and author, it searches everything that is in the record about the item. So let's look at how to search in WorldCat. I'm going to do a quick keyword search just using the word Excel. And this is the results page for my Excel search. And the thing that I want you to notice here is that these first few um, items that come up all say that they're available in the State Library General Stacks. That is because these are all items that we have here at the State Library. Um, and if you look up at the top of the page at the results from this search, you will see that there are over 2 million results. And of course, we do not have 2 million items on Excel here at the library. The database is searching all of WorldCat. So it is searching a lot of other our libraries for Excel, which is why we have so many different results. Another thing, um, the state library materials float to the top of the results. And that's because it the, the sorting preference has been set up that way. So the way you can sort is with this box here and the sort is set up to search by library and relevance. So what it does is that it brings up everything that is in the Kentucky Department for Libraries and Archives that matches my search for Excel and then it applies a relevant search to everything else that is not here at the State Library. So if you scroll through the results after about 25 or 30 items, you'll probably see that the items listed are not here at the State Library, but they should still be relevant to something that has to do with Excel. So if you wanted to change this sort, you would just go up here to this box and select how you want your results to be sorted. So I have changed my results to relevance only. And you can see the difference here on this results page because there's no held by the Kentucky Department for Libraries and Archives statement. And that's because this particular book is not here at the library. So if you don't see the statement, then you know that it is an item that we don't actually have here at the State Library. Another thing that you'll see on the results screen is the format. And this, is, this becomes very important because there are so many different formats in WorldCat Discovery. It goes beyond books. It has ebooks, audiobooks, large print books, DVDs, articles, music CDs, and so on. So it's very important when you are looking at your results page to know what the format of the item is that you're interested in. 
So when you're on your results page, you will see something like this. And this is telling me that the format of this item is interactive multimedia. These next two are print books. So it's actually the physical item. And the last one is an e-video. So as you can see, you can get items in a lot of different formats when you're searching in WorldCat. Another thing that you can tell from your search results is the availability of those things that we do actually have here at the State Library. So let's go back to my results page on my Excel search. And it shows that that first item is checked out and it also shows when the item is due back. And the second two items, it shows they are available. And it gives you, it shows their location and their call number. So it makes it very simple for you to know what is available or when an item that you're wanting will become available. You can also handle your results in different ways, such as by emailing the results, citing them, or saving them. So to do this, you would come over here and select whatever option you want to handle your results. So if you select Share, another little box will drop down and you can either email the record or save a link of the record. Another thing you can do is create a temporary list of items that you're interested in by clicking here on Save. And once you've saved something, the star turns from white to blue. And if you want to view what you have saved, you would just go up here to My List. And all the items that you have added to your list are here for you to review. And the last thing I want to show you in the search results are the facets. And that's a way that you can add limits to a search once you've already done a search. And I'm going to go over this pretty quickly because we'll be taking a look at the facets again when, when we talk a little bit more about searching in WorldCat. So once you've already done a search, you can add limits to it um, by the different things I've listed here, like what library or format or language or date and so on. And you can find the facets here on the left side of your screen. And as you see, you have an option to limit your search by libraries. And in WorldCat, the default library, the default is libraries worldwide. But if you wanted to just search for materials here at the Kentucky Department for Libraries and Archives, you can just check that box. And it will limit your search to items we have here. And so you can limit your search by content, format, databases, author. And if you scroll on down the page, there are more to choose from, such as the publication year, language, and topic. So let's take a, take a look at another basic search technique, which is combining concepts to focus, on a, to focus a search. So I'm going to do a search on Kentucky governors. So I just put the word Kentucky and governor in the search box. And as you can see, I have over 7,000 results. And if you look pretty closely and know the names of some of our governors, you will see that these results are about governors from Kentucky. And you can see that a lot of these items are held by the Kentucky Department for Libraries and Archives. But I want to be a little more specific. So what I'm going to do is in addition to Kentucky Governor, I'm going to add the word LaFoon. I'm now looking for information on Gov Governor Ruby LaFoon, so I'm just putting in his name. And as you can see, my results went from 7,000 to 72. So I've narrowed my search down by combining concepts. And you can tell by what you're seeing here that I'm getting things specifically about Governor LaFoon. So as you add terms to a search, you are going to make your search results smaller. So what I'm telling the database is that I want records that have the words Kentucky Governor and LaFoon in them. And that narrows your search down quite a bit. I would also like to take a quick look at advanced searching. Using advanced searching, you can do field searching, which means you can search different fields. So if you know the name of an author 
or part of the title or something like that, you can search for the title, the author, the subject, and so on. And advanced searching also allows you to narrow your search down by date or format. So to, advise, to find advanced searching from this interface, you would just need to click here. And if you're on the other interface, it's right there. And once you've clicked on the advanced search, this is the page you will be directed to. Now on this page, you see you have more boxes. And there is an, also an option to add a row so you can put as many search terms in as you want. And down at the bottom where it says limit your search, you can limit your search by format, year, and location. So when you do a field search, these are the different fields different fields in the records that you would be able to search. A keyword search is the default search, but as you can see from this list, there are a lot of different fields to choose from on how you want to search for information. You can also limit your search by format. And in this case, I chose to limit mine by audiobook. So I'm going to do a search here and I'm looking for things by the author James Patterson. So I put in his last name and I want items that have the word cross in the title because a lot of his books have that word in the title and I've limited the search to audiobooks. So when I do this search, You'll see here that all of my results are in the audiobook format and that everything is by James Patterson and that everything has cross in the title. But I'd like to take a look at this second one here. This icon here is telling you that this is an e-audiobook or an electronic audiobook. So whenever you see the little orange E or something that says e-audiobook, you will know that it is not an audiobook on CD. It's the electronic version of the audiobook. Now, for e-audiobooks that are held by the State Library, all you would need to do is click here on the Access Online, and when you click on this, you'll be taken here, which is the Kentucky Library's Unbound page that has your item. And once you're here, you're actually out of World Cat Discovery and on the Kentucky Library's Unbound website. And if you're a user of this website, then you're familiar with this type of page that you'll find on Kentucky Libraries Unbound. But this is where the catalog will take you directly to their website and then you would go through the process of downloading the electronic book or electronic e-audio book to your device. And if you're not familiar with this page, um, to sign in to access these materials, you would just need to use your state library account number and password the same that you use for any of the items that you want to check out here at the State Library. It's the same account number and password. Okay, so now let's take a look at some facets. And as I mentioned before, facets are used to add limits to a search that you have already done. So when we limited things with the field search and the advanced search, we did that before we did the search, and facets are used after we've already done the search. So I'm going to do a search on mining in Kentucky. And as you can see from my results, I have over 14,000. But let's say I'm only interested in finding articles on mining in Kentucky. What I would need to do is go over here to the left-hand side of the page and select articles. which will narrow my results down. So my results changed from 14,000 to 4,000. And as you can see, they are all indeed articles. And they're all peer-reviewed articles, which typically means that it's from some kind of scholarly journal. So these would be good articles for someone who's doing research. And you can narrow things down further if you would like. So for an example, I could scroll down the page. If, say I'm only interested in more current articles, I could limit my search 
to the last five years or I could even create a custom date range but let's just say I want things from the last five years so when I do that my results go from 4,000 to a little under 2,000 so again if you use the facets to add limits to your to a search you've already done it'll help you narrow things down and let's see this this first article here is an electronic article so when you see this access online you can access the article directly from WorldCat Discovery so if I click on that I'm taken here to this page and once I'm on this page again I'm no longer in WorldCat Discovery now I'm actually in the Kentucky Virtual Library and if I scroll down to the bottom of the page it would show that I'm actually in the EBSCOhost database so WorldCat is actually going into EBSCO and searching for you so if you click on the PDF full text it will bring up the full text of the article and the great thing about thing, articles being in the PDF format is that it will include all of the pictures, charts, graphs, and so on. And you can download the article so you can save it if you need to come back to it again. So um, searching in WorldCat can be very helpful because you're just using one interface and it's taking you to a lot of different places to find a lot of different information. So here again are some different ways to search in WorldCat. There's the basic search, which is the default, and, and you can improve on that keyword search by combining concepts. There is the advanced search where you will use the field search, and I recommend this if you know something about what you are searching for, such as the name of the author or some of the words in the title, and you can also narrow, narrow your field search down by date and format and then again there are the facets which are great if you would like to start with a broad search and then you want to start narrowing things down from there sorry so does anybody have any questions before we move on okay Okay, so now that we've talked about some of the information that's in WorldCat and what WorldCat is, let's talk about how to get some of the materials that you're interested in. So we've already seen two ways that we can do that, and that's with the electronic materials. You can access um, them online with the Access Online button, and the physical materials that are in the State Library, you can request them with the KDLA customers request this item button and those are for the audio books, books, DVDs that we actually have here at the State Library you can just place them on hold and once you do that the materials will be delivered to your office free of charge so let's take a quick look at how to do this So I went back to my Excel search and let's say that I'm interested in this first book here, Excel 2010 for Dummies. I'm going to open this by clicking on the title, which will take you to this item detail page and this page provides you with different information about the item such as the description, the different editions and formats that this item comes in and so on. There is one thing here that can help you decide if this book is something that you really want and that is the description so here you have the description it gives you a lot of detail about the item it provides a physical description so this particular book is 390 pages if I have an audio book it'll tell me how many discs are that come with that audio book um, it gives you notes about the content it provides you with the different subjects that are covered in the book and it provides a brief summary of the book so the description provides you with a great deal of information about the item that you're interested in and it will help you determine if this is something that you really want to check out or not. So after you read the description and you decide that this is an item that you're interested in, you would just need to click here on the KDLA customers request this item button. And once you've requested, well, once you've clicked on this, you'll be taken 
to the Kentucky Department for Libraries and Archives login screen. And if you've never seen this screen before, then the first thing that you will need to do is set up your password. But once you set up your password, or if you've already or have already set up your password, then from now on you would just simply need to log in with your library account number and password. And then it will just take you back to the item you were interested in so you can confirm if you really want this want to place the item on hold or not. And if you do, you just click submit. So after you have submitted your requested item, one of the circulation staff here at the State Library will receive that request and they will check out the items to you and they will send them to you through Messenger Mail if you work here in Frankfurt or through UPS if you work outside of Frankfurt. And when we do send things to you through UPS, we send it with, ret with return postage so it is of no cost to you as a state employee to request items and have them sent to you. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens when you're searching through WorldCat and you come across items that you need and it's something that we do not have access to here at the State Library, but it's available at another library. We have a service known as Interlibrary Loan or ILL and basically with Interlibrary Loan, if it is an item that we don't have here, we will borrow that item from another library and loan it to you. And I'm going to show you an easy way for you to submit your own interlibrary loan request while you're in WorldCat Discovery. So let's go back to my Excel search. And I want this first book, Excel Macros. And I can tell that it's not at the State Library because there's nothing here that says that it's held here. So to request this book, I would just click on the title. And here under Libraries Worldwide, I would click on the State Employees Request Item Through Interlibrary Loan. And when I click on that, I'll be taken to this page where I'll need to fill out some information to complete the request. But I would like to point out this little note here at the bottom of this page. When we provide interlibrary loan services, we do that just for our state employee customers. Um, we have other customers here at the state library that are Kentucky residents but not state employees, and we do not serve their interlibrary loan requests. That's something that we ask them to do through their public library. For state employees, we try to keep this service related uh, to your work-related needs. So if you need something through interlibrary loan that is strictly for your entertainment and has absolutely nothing to do um, with your work or bettering you as an employee or something like that, um, we would ask you to go to your public library for those requests. But I would also like to, to point out that um, we interpret the work related very broadly. So it can include a variety of topics from material on retirement to improving your finances to your own personal development. So keep that in mind. It's just for the really obvious recreational materials um, that we would ask for you to go to your public library for those interlibrary loan requests. So you would just need to fill out the form and we will need the date you would need it. So if you need this really quickly, then you need to fill out the request as soon as you can because interlibrary loan isn't the fastest service. The item you're requesting is coming from another library and it may be a library in Kentucky or it may be a library in Alaska. It just depends on who has the material and is willing to lend it to us. And so the only other things you would need to fill out are your name and your KDLA account number. And then you would just need to submit it. And once you submit it, you will get this screen that shows that your request has been submitted. And you will not receive an email saying that your request went through. So I would recommend that you either print this screen or write down your request number just in case you need to check the status of your interlibrary loan request. So once you have submitted your work-related material, what happens with the request for physical materials and books for the most part is that when we receive them, we'll send them to you. 
either through messenger mail or through UPS and like I said before it can take a while depending on where the item is coming from so you must allow between 5 to 20 working days to receive items requested through interlibrary loan. And another thing about interlibrary loan is that it is important that you return these items to us on time since we are borrowing them from another library. We can't really cut you any slack on the due dates or renew them for you like we could if it was an item that you had checked out from our collection. And there, are, there may also be articles that aren't available full text online and that we don't have access to at the State Library. And if that's the case, then again, you could request those items through interlibrary loan as well. So let's say I'm searching on turtles in Kentucky and I just want articles for this search. So I'll change my format to just articles. And you can see all of my results are articles. And that there are a few that I can access online. But say that I'm interested in this first one here. You can see that there is no access online button there. So when I click on the title of the article and I'm on the item detail page, I would just click on the state employees request the item through interlibrary loans like I did with the book. And you'll be taken to this, a similar screen and it's just giving you information about the article and you just fill it out like you did before. And what happens with the articles is that the library will request the article from another library that has it and they will send it to us in a PDF format. And once we receive the article, we will email it to you within 3 to 20 business days. So again, here are all the different ways to get materials that you were found while searching in WorldCat. You can get the electronic materials by the access online button, the physical materials in the state library by placing them on a hold, and the physical materials in other state libraries by requesting them through interlibrary loan with the request item, and the articles, you can request them through interlibrary loan too with the request item. And again, we ask that you limit the interlibrary loan stuff to work-related material only. So does anyone have any questions before we move on? Okay. So the last thing that I would like us to take a look at before we finish up is how to set up an account in WorldCat Discovery and what you can do with this account. So this is where you can actually get into your account and look at what you have checked out or placed on hold and what is due back to the library, that sort of thing. And this is the same account that you use for any of our library services such as logging into the databases or using Kentucky Libraries Unbound. So um, the account number is your KDLA account number and whatever password you have set up. And these are the different kinds of things that you can do once you have set up an account in WorldCat Discovery. So you can look at the items that you have checked out. You can renew items. You can place items on hold or view items that you have on hold. Um, you can look at your charges for lost items. And you can change your password. So once you're in WorldCat Discovery and you're on any search page, here in the right hand corner is where you can sign in to your account. And you will also see the sign in on any page, like any page once you have already done a search. You can search, you can sign in anytime that you're browsing around in WorldCat. So once you click on the sign in link, you will be taken to KDLA's account login page and you just need to log in with your username and password like you would do when you're using any of our other services that require a login. 
and you know you're signed in because now instead of the sign in at the top you see your name so if you drop down the box under your name there are a few different options to choose from here but the one I'm going to focus on today is my account and I'm just going to show you a few different things that you can do here in my account so this is what comes up when you click on my account and the first thing it tells me is how many books I have checked out it will also tell me the due dates for these books and it will give me the option to renew the book when you renew an item in WorldCat it will allow you to renew an item one time for two weeks so if you come back a second time and try to renew it it won't let you what you would need to do is contact us here at KDLA and you know if the item is not placed on hold to someone else and nobody else is waiting for it we can renew it for you a, a second time so you can also view what items you have placed on hold and you can remove items or edit the items if you want to and it also shows you what charges you may have on your account from overdue items and I would like to take a minute to just talk about how we handle charges here at KDLA so if you're not a regular user of our library you probably don't know that we don't charge for overdue days so say you have a book and it's two days overdue we're not going to charge you a quarter every day that it's overdue or something like that um, however if your book is a month overdue then we will place charges on your account and these charges are for replacing the item that you have not returned so that's what these charges are here that you see this book is more than a month overdue and replacement charges have been placed on the account now don't let that bother you too much because our goal is not to get money out of you but we want our items returned to us so if you have charges placed on your account all you need to do is return the item to the state library and we'll take the charges off so we just really want to get the items back um, we don't charge for overdue days and we will remove the charges that are placed on the account if the item is returned and another thing you can do in my account is change your password so these are all different items that you can do once you're in WorldCat Discovery to manage your account and so we had some objectives for today's training I wanted to take a look at WorldCat Discovery and why you as state employees may want to use it and we've now seen that it is a very large database with hundreds of millions of information materials and you may want to use it because it's a very easy way to search all of those different materials in all different formats in one search we also looked at the different ways that you can access WorldCat Discovery from our website at kdla.ky.gov we looked at different ways to search within WorldCat Discovery from using a very basic keyword search to an advanced search and we looked at how using facets can help you narrow down your results once you've done the search we looked at different ways to get materials from electronic records that are available online to physical items we actually have here at the State Library and even items that we don't have here but can gain access to through interlibrary loan and of course there is the WorldCat Discovery account which is a way for you to keep up with your items that you have checked out or placed on hold and how you can manage these items and hopefully I have covered all of the objectives and WorldCat is something that you will be interested in and will want to use in the future so if anyone has any questions um, go ahead and chat those in and I'm going to open up um, a box for you to be able to download today's presentation if you want to so you all should be able to see that on your screen now so if you just click on that then you should be able to download the file
And here's our contact information here at the State Library. Um, if you have any questions or need help with anything, feel free to give us a call. Um, or you can send us an email through the Ask a Librarian link, which is on um, our homepage at our website at kdla.ky.gov. You will also be receiving an email within a, maybe a week to two weeks um, with an online survey about today's training and your training certificate. And if no one has any questions, then I'm going to wrap this up. I will be hanging out here for a little while with Debbie, so if anyone has any questions, chat those in or if you think of something later on you can always contact me through my email or give us a call here at the reference desk thank you so if no one has any questions I'm going to mute the mic um, but like I said I'll be here for several minutes so if you have something or think of something feel free to chat it in thank you all